Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we're taking a look at the Andrew Demco AD20. This is a new model or newish model from Andrew Demco, and it's one that I've wanted to get a hold of for a while. So the first thing I have to say is huge thank you to Mark for sending this along. The second thing I have to say is I am kind of an Andrew Demco fanboy, so I'll bring in two of my favorite knives here. This, of course, is the Cold Steel 4MAX. This is the Cold Steel AD10. I love both of these, along with practically any uh, every other knife that has ever been you know, conceived of in the mind of Andrew Demko. There are a couple Cold Steel Demko designs. I think the, the Cold Steel Spartan is a Demko design, and I'm not in love with it, but the vast majority of his work I really, really like, uh, and certainly his recent stuff, you know, these knives, the AD15, uh, the the uh wow air light or whatever that is you know i i like all of his his uh, i like everything that he designs pretty well and i like his approach overall so i wanted to put that out there because you know this is i like this knife i like andrew demko and so i wanted to get those biases out there right from the start all right um and so when i heard that he was coming out with a new knife yeah i was excited about it i'm excited about it now to check it out and play with it and again i have to thank a viewer mark for sending this along because it's a really really cool knife now this is not the one i would buy i should point that out right away and i do want to buy one of these i want to go with a g10 version i'm not sure about the color yet i'm pretty i'm not really picky about handle color uh, and I'd like the hole in the blade because I do like the idea that I could spidey flick this knife and the G10 version is a little bit lighter which appeals to me as well so size and weight on this that's that kind of brings up size and weight this is a fairly substantial knife guys eight and eleven sixteenths overall so almost three quarters uh three and five eighths on the blade length here five and one sixteenth handle that's the the closed length okay so just over five inches when it's closed three and three quarter inches of grip area okay right in here and you've got that choil as well to add to that. So if three and three quarter inches is not enough for you, I think even with pretty large hands, you're going to be fine. You can choke up on this and I have to, well, we'll wait for that. Um, it, it's really well thought out the way that your fingers land when you do choke up on the knife. Now the weight on this titanium version is 7.4 ounces, which is pretty hefty. This is also available. I'm sure everyone watching this knows, but you can get these in G10 and those weigh in around six ounces. So uh, a bit lighter there. All right. So we've got a big, substantial, heavy duty knife. No question about it. And, and if you, if that's not your thing, okay, if you, <laughs> if you don't like cold steels, if you don't like the Benchmade Crooked River, if you don't like uh you know some of the larger stuff this is probably not your knife all right so let's put that out there right away this is tough it's heavy duty and you're going to be carrying something more substantial to get that level of toughness and level of capability and so yeah if you're if you're you know a huge fan of i don't know the mini griptilian or the spider co sage or something and that's like your ideal knife this is a long way from that so uh, let's go ahead and move into the blade. The blade carries on this sort of heavy duty, large, you know, hard use type of approach. This one happens to be 3V. You can actually see that, hopefully. Got to try and get it to catch the light just right. There you go. So see the little 3V scratched in there on the blade tank. So we've got 3V steel, also available in 20CV. Big hunk of steel, by the way. This is 181 thousandths, uh, sort of a saber grind, pretty thick, substantial grind. Like it's not really high up here. It's a pretty low saber grind. Lots of material carried out to the tip there. I will say this, my initial reaction when I first took a look at this and, and was handling it in the first couple of days, I kind of thought to myself, eee, this, this may be too thick it might be too you know he might have erred too far on the side of durability and not enough on the side of cutting power but then i started using it and you know as andrew demko is prone to do uh, he tends to be really good at making knives that do cut and this is no exception so you know, unlike some of the big heavy duty folders out there, really any, some of the heavy duty fixed blades as well, a lot of times they totally sacrifice cutting power. This hasn't totally sacrificed cutting power. Now, listen, this is the same edge dimension, 28 thousandths as a PM2, 29 thousandths. I think it might be a little bit thicker, like a one, you know, 
it might be 29 thousandths versus 28 thousandths, but it's about the same edge dimension as uh, behind the edge dimension, I should say, as a PM2. However, right, the blade stock is substantial. The grind is pretty abrupt there. So this is not going to slice like a PM2, but for what it is, it actually cuts surprisingly well. And that's what really, really impresses me about this blade. Uh, this one's got a stone wash finish. I think that's pretty standard. As you, many of you will know, there's a, a hole now in a lot of these blades. I don't know if this is an older version or if it's just a, a variation. Um, finally, they've done a nice job with some jimping out here all the way out the spine before that little clipped section here. And I have to say in the choked up position, my thumb quite naturally lands out here near the front of this. So I really appreciate the thoughtfulness of jimping that all the way along. Uh, and it's, it's really perfect jimping. Like it's not too sharp that it tears your hands up, but it's sharp enough that it really gives you, it feels confident. So uh, definitely a fan of the way they've done that jimping on the blade there. So, uh, yeah, do I like this blade? Absolutely. We, as I described the balance here, it definitely balances toward the heavy duty end of the spectrum, but it does so in a way that still allows it to cut pretty darn well, which I have to say is impressive. Let's move on to the shark lock. This is an, a new and interesting lock. It sort of functions like an axis lock in that when you open the knife, okay, in this case, it's this whole piece of material here, moves up onto the blade tang, which is what keeps the knife from opening and closing. Where it contacts, I'll see if I can show you, right in there, see the tip of my finger? There's that little, you can actually see the rubbing where the lock bar here interfaces with, come on, focus, the blade tang. So that's the lock face right there, just that little spot. And the way it works is in between these two pins, all right, there's this piece of metal comes around. There's a, comp there's a coil spring in here. And so as I push back, I'm compressing that coil spring. It kind of lifts up to release the blade. And there's a hole in here. This, this pin is riding inside of a, uh, a cutout that causes it to lift up that way. All right, and then as you close it, it drops down and slides forward. So that's how the lock functions. This knife, when we're talking about action, it also happens to be on bearings and it is very, very smooth and fast. A ton of fun, guys. Absolutely a blast. Um, you know, I guess it takes, it takes the, the axis lock, which is already a pretty good lock. All right. All right. You can sort of see how that functions there. Uh, this, in this case, this bar slides up onto the tang of the blade. All right. In this case, it's not a bar. It's, it's sort of a little tab that comes out of the front of this uh, lock bar in the back. So uh, really cool lock, lots of fun, easy to use. I will say I had real doubts about this, this, I guess, shark fin. Okay. I was like, that's, that looks like it's really, really awkward ergonomically, but it, you know, however I hold the knife, it works just fine. That was, you know, if I'm holding it here, if I'm choked up in this position, if it's, you know, a hammer grip, a saber grip, it, it the, the lock bar, the lock, uh, angle there does not get in the way. Uh, and that was something I was quite concerned about. Uh, this is on bearings and I don't know how I feel about that. I I'm okay with it. I would kind of like to see a version of this on phosphor bronze. Uh, not that I'm holding my breath for that, but, uh, I think it would be cool just because, well, it, well, I would not argue it's necessary. I tend to like, um, phosphor bronze on what's intended to be a hard use knife. And this is definitely built to be a hard use knife. All right. Um, in terms of function, in terms of strength, in terms of fidget factor, you know, yeah, action on this is really, really nice. Let's move on now to the handle. Now, obviously I've got the titanium handled version rather than the G10. And it is, you know, a, two big slabs of textured titanium, standoff construction, Typical Demco clip with kind of a weird thing going on down here to accommodate the lanyard hole. All right. It does look to be, you know, you'd need another clip. It's not reversible easily, but if there were another clip available, it would be reversible. And of course, this, this knife then would be uh, pretty, pretty ambidextrous because 
the the lock being on the back allows for you know left or right handers to use it just fine uh, in terms of ergonomics again really really nice typical hard use knife right uh, you know most knives that are big and heavy duty like this feel good in hand because they're quite hand filling and they allow you to really get a hold of them the texture here on the titanium is kind of balanced it, it gives a little bit of, of grippiness i suspect the g10 would be a little grippier uh, unless it's like polished or something after which which maybe it is um i obviously not not having the g10 version i can't speak to that but i just suspect it the g10 is going to be a little harsher on your hands um and and this is not bad at all so i, I wouldn't be worried about it so that's the handle. Um, again, this is not going to be for everybody. And, and I will say, I'm not in love with the look here. You know, maybe you would anodize the titanium or do something different with it, and that would be fine. Uh, but for me, this is a knife that, that kind of feels like it should be G10. Um, and that's, again, that's just for me. Let's go ahead and get to some comparisons. We've already had um, the Cold Steel 8010. And for those of you who are wondering, uh, by the, in the Cold Steel Formax, we've had these two in here already. All of these are knives that I absolutely love. Um, for those of you who are wondering, and I know I'll get comments on this, there's no indication, in fact, there's a negative indication. Uh, Andrew Demko has said he has no plans to have Cold Steel do a production version of this. Um, now, whether that changes, you know, maybe whether there are negotiations and they offer to pay him more, more money or something like that, uh, that's a different story. Hold on, I've got <laughs> my setup just messed up. As you can see, the light I was using just fell. Let me pause and get this re fixed. Okay, so after that <laughs> slight equipment malfunction there, uh, we're back up and running. And uh, I was just saying that there are no plans. In fact, you know, Demko indicated that there are no plans to do a production version with Cold Steel. However, he also indicated that he may be working on a more budget friendly version. So how that's happening, who knows? You know, maybe he's using his contacts for manufacture that he's established with Cold Steel, who, whatever the case may be. All right. Um, there is some indication that there may be some that are available for under, I think the, the G10 version, the machine ground G10 version go for like 425 uh, if you can find them retail. And so maybe there'll be one that's, I don't know, 250 or $300 or whatever the case may be. Uh, that might be a thing that happens. If you really want one of these, I probably wouldn't count on it. I would start putting some pennies aside and saving up to buy the... Uh, the standard G, the standard version, whichever one you happen to want. All right, let's get back into some comparisons here. Um, an obvious, you know, comparison would be any sort of heavy duty, hard use sort of bench made. Uh, I happen to have the Freak here. I didn't bring the Crooked River with me this time, but it's because of the similarity in the lock. Okay, so uh, similar functioning, similar fidgety, you know, fun type of lock there. A knife that this kind of puts me in mind of is certainly the XM18. This would be more in line with an XM24, but you can see somewhat typical texturing there. All right, again, a fairly thick blade stock, sort of a, a heavy duty, robust style of knife. And if that's your thing, you know, I suspect if, if you're like me and you love the XM18, you would probably be drawn to the 8020 as well. Uh, Chris Reeve Knives in Kosi, another knife that I absolutely love because of its, its you know, a very capable, heavy-duty knife. Now, I would say this. I think the, the Inkosi is a little more balanced. So if you want something that's going to be, I, I would argue that this is every bit as tough as this. It's just a little bit slimmer, a little bit easier to carry, and going to slice just a little bit better because of the thinner blade stock. All right, so that's that's a question that... Uh, you'll have to answer for yourself. And of course, in a perfect world, you'd be able to afford both of these, but I get that many people would not be able to do so. All right, so uh, the Inkosi is a, a pretty good comparison. And if I had, you know, if there was time for a more a longer term comparison and to make a series of videos with this, remember, this is not mine, so I don't want to be spending a lot of time with this, but you could probably do some interesting comparisons between uh, these two knives as well as these two. All right. Uh, another knife that this brings to mind for me is the Spyderco Amalgam. Uh, and that's because the Amalgam is definitely designed to be on the, the slightly harder use end of the spectrum. We've got a little more substantial blade stock here, a flat grind. Uh, they, they both, again, have bearing pivots. So if you want something that's kind of big and hard use but still fidget friendly, this is a pretty good option. 
All right. So uh, that I think covers most of the discussion. I did want to throw in one other knife here, and this is uh, the Civivi Shredder because this represents a com the opposite approach. Okay, so here we've got super thin blade stock, super <laughs> thick blade stock. This is ground incredibly thin behind the edge, and and this is where you know in my in my carry preferences. I pick the knife that I think is going to be most appropriately appropriate for what I'm doing that particular day. And of course, the Shredder is not a super comparable knife. It's not to meant to be hard use. It's meant to be more a light use EDC. So overall, what do I think of this? It is a beautiful design. It's a highly effective cutting tool. It's extremely well put together. Uh, definitely balances on the, the heavy duty, hard use end of the spectrum. But for me, that's fantastic. And if that's your preference as well, I think you're really, really going to like this. I would say the people who aren't going to enjoy this are going to be anyone who's not into that at all. All right. If you, if you think that anything bigger than, I don't know, a, a PM2 is like a waste of time, well then, yeah, you're not going to like this. All right. If all your knives are, are three inch blades and weigh under two ounces, then this is not the knife for you. But if you're like me and you like the bigger stuff, you like something more substantial and more capable, and you want something that is really fun to fidget with, but will also be, it is also an absolute tank, then this may be a perfect knife for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will put the channel sponsors down below and checking those out uh, and using those discount codes does help me out a whole lot. Um, I don't know where to get any of these right now. I know that question is coming up. I did do a quick search and I couldn't find any in stock, but I know like it's going to be a regular thing. If you want one, you can wait it out and you'll be able to get your hands on one. There you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will talk to you soon.